Hello everybody, my name is Eric, and, to and today we're going to be taking down some obfuscated malware with the help of our friends Minimag, who wanted to share their open source AI and get the word out. Now what's really cool about this is the context length. Now, simple way of understanding that, like how people have a working memory, and of course AIs really only have a working memory because there's no real long-term memory. What it does is it means the amount of text that can be in context. Minimax has 4 million. For reference, 01 by OpenAI has about 128,000. Claude is 200,000. Google's about the only model uh, to even be in the millions. They've got 1 million. Well, Minimax got 4 million. So one of the things I've often used AI for, and I've shown it in my videos quite a bit, is deobfuscating malicious scripts, which is basically a programming equivalent of a translation task, something that transformer models are naturally quite good at. So in just a minute, show that off. Now one of the techniques they've used, and this is an open source model, although I will say the system requirements for this are going to be quite high, but not to worry, they have a completely free chat platform that we're going to be using, and they also have one of the cheapest APIs. One of the inevitable blockers to context is on a normal language model, the impact of the context window on memory usage is quadratic, exponential, meaning that very large context windows become impractical very quickly, especially important in open source, uh, like when people say you can run a model on, say, a Mac Studio, yes, but not with a lot of input tokens. So th what these people have done is they're using a new attention method they call lightning attention and softmax attention, that is able to achieve a less extreme curve on that. So as a result, you can put much bigger data in. Now here we've got the most interesting benchmarks, 4 million needle in a haystack test. Now of course, a model that doesn't have a big enough context window simply cannot pass this test because it just can't be done. Uh, as we can see, uh, we're pretty, pretty competitive. And then, uh, best at 1 million, and of course anything bigger than 1 million, there is simply no competition. So, if you want to try this out, well, that's easy enough to achieve. So we'll just go to chat.minimax.io, and here we've got everything we need already. You can just sign in with your Google account. I'll do that in a second. Now here we go. Now this chat app is completely free, and they've said it has no usage limits. There might be an abuse throttle at some point. And we've also got an upload option, so if you want to put something big in, you can do that. And it works. Mostly like other language models, we can try some simple questions. How many alls are in strawberry? Uh, this I, I don't actually know if it gets this one right. So this is going to be a live. You may not you may not think that's difficult, but trust me, for for language models, this is actually a difficult question. Uh, and it's kind of interesting. This isn't a reasoning model, but it does know to now enough enough wasting time. Let me show you what you really what you're here to see. Let's try some big nasty obfuscated script. Now I have a few uh, in my uh, bat emulator folder because that was the reason I initially uh, created a batch file emulator. These two are real world uh, malware and the rest are just examples that don't all that interesting. So we'll go, with the, we'll go with some real world. Now these are batch files. I'm also try some PowerShell because I do have a batch file emulator that I made. But for other, uh, other scripts, it's more difficult because... The benefit of using a system like this is that it's going to be much closer to universal. Let's try this out. So you do have to rename it to .txt if you want it to work. It's easy enough to do. Now this is a humongous file. This one would probably be over a million tokens. It might even be over two million. Because if it's six million, and here we go. So, so that's encoded environment variables, manipulating encoded strings. Okay, yeah, that's correct. So, it's a decent answer. Let's try let's try some other uh, files. Now this one is a tiny bit smaller. Now let's take a look at this. This is a malicious J script from the previous video. What it does, uh, well we're going to find out. Now this is also massive. Remember 300 kilobytes of text, uh, or roughly 300,000 characters, is a very big file. It would take you a very long time to read this. So let's see what is really going on here, and then we can try unraveling it further. So we can see a base64 decoding function. Now I'm going to obviously look at the script, just so you know this isn't uh, a hallucination. So then we have a hexadecimal string to byte array function. Yeah, that looks about right. Then an 
explore. Let's make why is not. Now, the thing that can make this really difficult for a lot of AIs is remember that the way this is written is not going to tokenize efficiently. That's why having massive context length enables some cool stuff here. Decoding and processing function. And we can see that this is, in fact, a J script, which is a JavaScript dialect that specifically is used on Windows. And it has some system access. We've gotten a pretty good, pretty good answer. Now, of course, there is an inherent limitation with any such analysis technique, and that is that it can usually only go one step deep. It can fully deobfuscate one script, but then we would have to do either manual analysis or simply prompt it to provide a deobfuscator to actually get at what's in the later nest that is deobfuscated. But compared to this, which is not sensical by any stretch of the imagination, we've certainly got a strong showing from our deobfuscator. Now I'm going to try try a, another script. Now this next file will need a bit of pre-processing to actually get the core part out. So I'm going to open it in I'm hex. Now if you look, first of all, you see a innocent audio file that will actually play, and then you see something that doesn't really look like a song. So let's work through to get this out, and then we can run this through and see what's really going on here. Pre-processing has been done. We've just got the script. I always like I'm Hex for this, but there are other editing tools you can use whenever you need to process a text file. And now we'll run the we'll run this, and let's see. Now this one is a different malicious piece of JavaScript. It is well obfuscated, but with any luck, we should get the truth out of it. And now we've got a deobfuscated explanation of what exactly is going on here. Now, of course, sometimes it, if it is unknowable, uh, it's not going to know, and it probably won't duplicate the entire ASCII script. So what we essentially have here is a massive array of ASCII variables and a program that decodes that. This is a fairly simple form of encoding, but it blows up the file size by a lot, which is another thing that makes using an AI to analyze it more difficult. No problem here. But now I'm going to go on over to CyberChef, where we will be able to reverse this ASCII encoding, because it really doesn't make a lot... Given this, we know how this works. There's no tricks here. We can just do that easily, and we don't need... AI for this step, but then once we manually deobfuscate the next one, uh, our friends at Minimax will help us out. Oh, from kernel code, delimiter is comma, and we want base 10. Put that in. Now we got our now we got our script out. Beautiful. And you can see we've now got the stage that we were working on earlier. Now, I have a totally insane idea, and I actually don't know if this is going to work or not. But what if we could take this beyond scripts? What if we could simply uh, export an entire program? Because remember, you can export the disassembly to a text file. I'm talking about that. I did just want to touch on one thing I saw go quite viral that I think was a bit misinformed. There was someone claiming they uploaded an exe to Claude and got a Python port. I looked into this a bit, and what seemed to actually happen is that it was working off of the strings, uh, not that it was able to tokenize bytecode, although that is technically possible uh, to for an AI just to be its own disassembler. It's just quite inefficient because you've got to rec represent the bytes in ASCII hexadecimal, which is already inefficient, as a single you should, for the size of a character, be able to get two hex bytes. But then you've got an even worse problem, and that is that it's just not going to tokenize effectively because none of it resembles words. So let's try exporting the level intermediate language. Now, whether this will work will mostly be a factor of how, how much text there actually is. This is a pretty small DLL. Could try something. If this doesn't work on this file, I could try something more minimalistic. Because I think the idea is really cool. I think whenever you try something like this, the thing that's always worth remembering is this is the worst it is ever going to be. It will be better in a few months. It'll be better in a few years. So ultimately, if it doesn't work today, it will work in the future. Unfortunately, on the size, I'm going to guess that won't work. But we're not giving up on concept. So I've got a small DLL that goes with I'm Hex, and we're going to try that one out. 
just so you can sort of see a proof of concept of something that might be more interesting as context sizes continue to get bigger. Now given this is only 100 kilobytes, we should be able to get, now of course I could have gotten that just from the name, let's just check if these basic uh, claims are correct. Maybe, I'm not as clear. Oh, now this looks correct. Now let's see. So it calls, see if it does. Yep. And it returns to this, which is imported from that. So it does in fact do that. Let's check if that's true. Yeah, that looks about right. That is in fact what it would do. Makes sense to me. Okay, so that's cool. And just remember, the context here is only going to get bigger. Right now we have 4 million. I would be surprised if we don't have 100 million by the end of the year. Maybe I'm being too optimistic, but there's some cool stuff here. Thanks again to Minimax for sponsoring this video. And please let me know in the comments below if you want to see anything more uh, about deobfuscation scripts. And a huge thank you to Minimax for sponsoring this video. Link will be in the description. No excessive offer has to be made because this is currently, other than the API, a fully free product. There's no strings attached. You can just check it out. Uh, just sign in with your Google account. Really cool. Thank you to Minimax again for sponsoring this video and helping me make this demonstration. Also, if you want to see some of the other techniques I use to fight obfuscated scripts, such as rewriting them, to get uh, the eval function out, please let me know in the comments below as well if that's something else that would be of interest. Or about AI, I know some people don't like it, that's fine. I try to make it clear, like if a video's about AI, you don't have to watch it if it's something that you don't like. I think it's something that is probably here to stay. And on that front, uh, I do have another plan that is a bit ambitious and we'll see if it works, but subscribe if you're interested. Uh, we're going to see if uh, OpenAI's O3, which is supposed to come out uh, next week, possibly this week from when you're watching this video, uh, can vibe code an operating system. Place your bets. For me for now, bye.